welcome to another video from Double Rail. This video is part two of our uh, British Rail terminology for uh, double gauge model railway layouts. And in this particular video, we're going to look at um, the number one end of uh, locomotives, in particular the uh, diesel locomotives. I think uh, it's pretty straightforward to figure out which is the uh, correct running direction for a steam locomotive. Um, but for uh, diesel locomotives, especially the ones with fuel cabs, it's a, uh, a lot more challenging to, to figure out the direction. Uh, we're also going to take a quick look at some of the um, identification numbers um, on some of the coaches as well. There's uh, some prefixes that we're going to look at. So this is going to be a pretty short video. Uh, in case you're wondering, I, I have not lost my mind. Um, there is a uh, mainline class 45. It's the uh, Manchester Regiment, and it's uh, coming around the uh, layout right now. And uh, it's running at a somewhat erratic speed. It's uh, an item I picked up off of eBay um, a few months back, and it's been on my uh, spares and repairs pile for a while. And um, I finally got it running, but it seems to have a, a bit of an issue with the pickups. So um, it's kind of running somewhat erratically at different speeds. Uh, so right now you can see it's probably running a little faster than it's supposed to. So um, the first part of this video, we're going to take a look at the uh, the number one end. So the number one end is basically the front end of the locomotive, and. Uh, I'm actually going to show you a uh, class 20 first. So um, here we have a uh, class 20 locomotive. And this end here is the nose end. And this uh, cab end here is the number, is actually the, um, the cab end. So the front end of the uh, class uh, 20 or the number one end is actually this particular end that goes nose first. Now, however, if you see um, the class 20 running in a variety of different configurations, uh, sometimes you will see it running like this, and sometimes you'll see it running cab to cab, and sometimes you'll see it running nose to nose. So um, when this is running in a figure of double-headed kind of uh, combination, it, it can be run in a variety of configurations. And just because this is the number two end, or the uh, not the rear of the train, the rear locomotive, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, they weren't run with this end going first. So um, there's quite a few photos where you can see um, both ends are, are used. So uh, a lot of times uh, it was just a whether or not the train could be turned around or there's a loop or whatnot at the um, at the remote end. So I'm going to move these back out of the way. Now one thing I would like to bring to your attention is that here you can see a grill on the front as well as the exhaust fans on the roof. Now while it's not a precise rule, um, usually, at least on the, the classes that I have here, um, the exhaust fans on the roof typically indicate the number one end. Uh, this is not always the case. But for the vast majority of the um, diesels that I have, the exhaust fan does seem to indicate that uh, it's the, the front end of the locomotive. And um, in some cases, like on the Deltec, where there's exhaust fans on both ends of the locomotive, uh, usually this larger grill is also on the front end or the number one end of the locomotive. So I'm going to go and take a look at a couple of other locomotives with you. Uh, just to show you that this varies from locomotive to locomotive. I'm going to start by uh, reining in the class 45 here. So here we have the uh, class 45. I'm going to just uh, push it back a little bit here, make it easier. So um, here you can see the exhaust fan is right there on the uh, the front end, 
and the larger grill is here on the front. So there's a larger grill there and the rear fan on the top and this is the, the number one end. Now on some of the more detailed models and on the actual uh, the real locomotives themselves, sometimes uh, the number one end is actually indicated by a, a sign or sticker or paint indicating the, the number one end. With, um, that's basically the, the class 45. And the class 47 is coming in. I'm just gonna slow it down and probably bring it back a little bit. Class 45 out of the way. So here you can see we have the uh, Class 47, and uh, I will once again push it slightly up front here so you can see. So on the uh, front end here, you can see you've got the uh, dual exhaust fans on the roof, and uh, now this particular version there isn't a large um, fan on the side, at least on this side. But um, you can see there that the exhaust fans still indicate the, the number one end, and that appears to be true for the uh, for the class 45. And uh, we'll just show you a few other locomotives. So uh, this here is a class 37, and again you can see there's a uh, large exhaust fan on the side and the roof fan, and this is actually the number one end as well for this particular class 37. And here we have a class 33 and you can see here that the uh, roof fan is on this end. There's a large fan on the side and this is indeed the number one end. And here is another class 47. This one is an interstate livery. Again, you can see the roof fans, and there's no big panel on the side of the class 47, but the class 47 that is its number one end. And likewise, here is a class 58. Again, the number one end. It has the dual exhaust fans on the roof and the large exhaust fan on the side. And here we have an old Triang class 31. Again, you can see there, there's the uh, the roof fan. There's no large panel on the side, but this is indeed the number one end. Here we have a class 25, and there you can see the roof fan is there and the, uh, there's also a large fan on the side and this is the number one end for the class 25 as well so as you're starting to see here there is a bit of a theme there's the uh, roof exhaust fan and then sometimes the large fan on the side or grill here is a class 26 again you can see there there's the uh, grill uh, on the side and the large exhaust fan on the roof and uh, I do apologize I think I have been calling this a exhaust fan it is actually typically a grill on the side of the, uh, the locomotive while the fan on the top is the roof fan and here's the class 35 again roof fan grill number one end Now there's some locomotives that this does not hold true for. So for example, this is a class 86. There are new roof exhaust fans and there's no large panel on the side. And I believe that the uh, number one end is indicated by the end that has the pantograph on it. And I'm sure if I'm wrong someone will correct me, but I'm pretty sure the number one end is the end with the pantograph on it. Finally, um, there is the 
deltic. And the deltic will cause us a few problems because the deltic actually has roof fans on both ends. And the way you tell if there is a number one end on the deltic, it is by this grill here on the front end. So this indicates the number one end here with the grill. So again, when the exhaust fans can't tell you, the grill is there to indicate that that is the case. This may just be a huge coincidence, but as I've shown you, almost every every locomotive that I have, that's uh, British Rail and um, you know, 70s, 80s, or early 90s locomotive will fall into that particular pattern. And I also have a Class 29, and you'll have to excuse it because it is actually been taken apart. Um, but here you can see the Class 29, and it has the exhaust fan there, and this actually is the number one end of the Class 29 as well. So there you have it. Um, pretty much every locomotive that I've shown you, uh, the number one end has been at that end. Now, uh, there are a few exceptions um, to this particular rule, like for example, here we have an HST, our Class 43, and obviously this particular version, there's no real exhaust fans, you get the exhaust outlet there, and then you get the large fan in the center, but of course, there's no real number one end on this because they run trailing driving car in pairs. And now we're going to look at the running numbers for a series of coaches. So here we have an inner city um, coach. It's a Mach 2 coach, I believe. And here you can see the code is M5120. Well, that M prefix means Midland and indicates the region that the coach belongs to. And um, I have a few other examples. So here's a modern intercity um, Mach 3 coach. See there? And if you see here, the uh, number of the coach is uh, W44039. And the W prefix indicates Western region. And uh, just to wrap it up. Uh, this particular model here, it's uh, I've got an S prefix, this indicates southern region. And this particular numbering scheme isn't limited to um, two coaches. Uh, it's also on multiple units. So this is uh, one end of a DMU. And here you can see there's an E prefix, and the E prefix indicates the eastern region. So, as you can see there, um, we have uh, W for Western, E for Eastern, M for Midland, and S for Southern. And um, some of the models will vary um, from, from company to company. Um, some of them do not have a region um, prefix just perhaps for um, either the particular model of coach or, or DMU didn't come with a particular region uh, prefix, but more than likely it's, it's been left uh, or omitted on purpose so that um, if you're modeling a particular you know area region uh, you can add that um, with a water slide transfer or something like that if you wanted to. So that's basically it. Um, so we just covered uh, two things today and that was the, uh, the number one end of the locomotives and the uh, region prefix on the um, on the coaches and DMUs. And um, that should basically cover it for today. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And like I said, it's uh, part two. And uh, we'll, we'll knock out part three here um, over the next day or so. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, please uh, feel free to comment and subscribe.